Good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. Long time, no talk. It's definitely a pleasure to be back recording, speaking to you guys. I uh, haven't posted a video in some time. I've been very busy with work um, and a little bit under the weather, to be honest with you. But hey, we still make it happen. Real estate doesn't wait for anybody, especially not for, not for me. So, But anyway, guys, my name is Joel Vargas. I'm a licensed and insured realtor here in South Florida. My number is 305-988-2230. And I would love to help you if you're looking to buy, you're looking to sell, you need a property manager. This is what I do every single day. Uh, we got some work done today. We had a closing last week. Uh, definitely the hardest closing I've done. Uh, that's another uh, topic we're going to get into. But we're actually going to be speaking about homes, guys. Homes, real estate, and people not being able to afford their home. Big question is why? You know, there's a good amount of elderly and retired individuals that are having uh, issues being able to pay their mortgage. And why is that? Well, it's primarily because of everything else going up around them. You know, you're looking at inflation, you're looking at higher expenses in utilities, you're looking at uh, higher taxes, higher insurance. Uh, everything is just pretty much more expensive now. Um, the situation, and, and I want to speak specifically here in South Florida, the situation is getting to a point, guys, where we're like, I mean, it's pretty, um, it's kind of scary. And, I, and when I talk about fees, I didn't mention HOAs, you know, for those of you living in condos and associations, especially here in South Florida, there's been, uh, and I'm not lying when I say this, double, double the increase in HOA payments. I can speak from experience. I live, a con I live in a condo in Davie, Florida. And um, it's, uh, when I moved in, guys, I was paying $330. Right now, I'm paying, uh, we have an assessment going on. I'm paying almost 800 bucks a month, guys, and just monthly HOA payments. And I always say this, had I known I was gonna be paying so much in HOA fees, I should have just bought a, a little house, to be honest with you, because it's just really, really uh, crazy right now how, how things are. I pay a little more in HOA payments than what I do in mortgage and it's kind of um, it's just getting out of hand at this point so we're gonna get right into it we're gonna be talking about the rising costs all throughout the south florida and about people not being able to pay remember we're talking about higher expenses higher interest rates higher insurance high utilities every every cost are going up all around them uh, another population that's struggling with payments too is going to be mobile homeowners and why is that well typically the way mobile homes work is that when you buy a mobile home, you buy the actual home itself, but you don't know the land. And with everything going up every single day, you already know that land is going up as well with all of this. So, and, um, you know, all, and again, I speak specifically in South Florida. Um, I don't like to speak about other areas. I do real estate here in South Florida every day, so I can see the rising prices. Inflation has a lot to do with it, to be honest with you, but it's all throughout, right, guys? I mean... Your cable is more expensive, your internet is more expensive, your electricity is more expensive, your groceries are more expensive, your gas is more expensive. Um, luckily, uh, I've been in a position where I've been able to afford the increases in at least the, uh, the uh, HOA payments, even though I'm paying double. Um, I've been able to you know, do okay with those payments, but a lot of people can't take on an extra $500 payment in HOAs. That's literally, that's literally a whole bill right there. That's literally a car payment. That's that's so much uh, expense. Um, and uh, I know we talk about HOAs a lot here on this channel, especially when it comes to condos, but this is the thing, guys. Most people won't qualify to buy a home. It's just the, the fact of the matter, you know? A single mom, a single dad, typically are gonna be looking at more affordable arrangements like uh, condos, townhomes, mobile homes. And because of that, they're not going to be able to, they usually don't qualify for a home. Now, here's the cash 22. Even though you don't qualify for a home, you're going to be still paying a very expensive rate on a townhome or a condo with interest rates, uh, HOA payments. Remember, guys, when you live in, a, in a, an association, associations, again, here specifically in South Florida, have a lot of power. So... If they decide that they want to put an assessment or there's something that needs to get done, sometimes it's not that the HOA wants to do it. Sometimes they have to do it. Sometimes there's uh, 
insurance reasons why they do it. Uh, my HOA specifically got to a point where they needed to redo all the buildings. They got to do their 40 year certification and they were forced to do this because if they didn't do this, we weren't going to be able to get insured and you can't have an association not be insured. Um, I don't know what kind of business people do here in South Florida and other associations, but at least here in Davian, where I live, they play by the book. Um, so we've literally had, again, a $500 increase in uh, HOA payments in about four years. So that's more than, I don't know the exact math, but I want to say it's about 150%, the 200% increase in HOA payments itself. And why do I keep harping on HOA payments? Because it just goes to show that even though I speak about real estate and I talk from a perspective at times, I don't own a single family home, but I do a lot of real estate that I sell single family homes. I sell condo, I sell townhomes. The situation right now is, is just really crazy. You know, um, one thing I do want to say about HOAs, and we always touch base on this, especially with condos, is that normally for condos here in South Florida, we have a problem where we don't have reserves. And because we don't have reserves, this is changing now. There have been laws implementing that by the end of this year, uh, most, if not all, HOAs have to have X amount of money in reserves. But um, typically the situation is right now, most condos don't have reserves. Now, what does that mean? Why is that important? Well, because if you want to buy a condo and you want to buy a townhome in an HOA that has no reserves, the bank is going to make you usually pay anywhere from 20 to 25% down, right? And so... Here's, 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 here's the cash 22, another cash 22. You're going to be paying less for a condo or a townhome than you are for a single family home. The cash 22 is in order to buy that property for that condo townhome, you got to put 20, 25% down and let's just keep it real, right? Let's keep it hundred percent. Most condos and towns here in South Florida, they're at least going for typically about 200,000 and up, right? That's just a, a rough, a rough number. So let's just use 200,000 and up. A 20% a 20 down payment on a $200,000 home is about $40,000. You include closing costs because you always got to pay closing costs. Uh, you're going to be looking at for like a basic two-bedroom, two-bathroom condo in a decent area, in a good area. You're looking at about fifty dollars to $60,000 down that you'd have to put to live in a condo or townhome. Now, the other, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the kickback is... Okay, well, you might as well buy a home. Yeah, they might as well buy a home because they're just putting so much money, but they won't qualify to buy a home. So it makes a situation where it's like you've, you're kind of stuck, you know? And I do want to say this, and I say this slightly. If you haven't bought a property by now, I'm not saying you're never going to be able to buy a property or afford a property, but it's going to become much, much, much harder now. I did mention that a lot of reserves here in South Florida, a lot of HOAs are having to, by law, have an X amount of, res of, of money in their reserves. So that's a good thing. That's going to mean that once they have a certain amount of money in their reserves, you'll be able to get a townhome or condo for a low down payment, typically between five, could be 10%, but it's way, way less than 20 to 25%. Makes it a lot easier to be able to buy a home here. So... Just little things, guys. I mean, I tell you guys these things just so you guys can be knowledgeable so you can see what's really going on in the market. And again, I speak of South Florida specifically. Um, and again, guys, we have our utilities here are going up pretty much every couple months. These things are getting really out of hand at this point. I'm always telling my uh, my wife, like, we go to, like, like Chick-fil-A. I went to Chick-fil-A. I got a meal. And then I got a another sandwich that was just a sandwich, right? And I got one meal and one sandwich. It came out to like 22 bucks. And right, you guys might be thinking, well, 22 bucks isn't the end of the world, but guys, 22 bucks for some basic, I mean, some decent fast food. I mean, it tastes good, but that's crazy, man. Like, you're telling me for one meal and one sandwich, 22 bucks, man. I mean, I am a, I am a frugal person. I'm not a cheap person, but I... I always watch my money, where it's going, what I'm spending on, and it's just getting out of, out of hand now. You go to Starbucks, you get a coffee, you get a, uh, I get a tea and some egg bites. I'm usually paying like 10, 11 bucks, like, so I mean for three people for like a basic, some coffee or tea and, and like a little snack, you're paying pretty much for each person like 10 to 12 bucks. 
But fortunately, this is where we live in. This is where I live in. So I, uh, I kind of feel sometimes like a, like a hamster in a hamster wheel, just constantly running on this hamster wheel just to be able to run and run and run and run and run and just to be able to pay bills. And But uh, you, I can look at it from that way or it can be, I can look at it from the other side. Thank, thank God that I have the opportunity to make a, a decent living and be able to pay bills, but it's still, it's still not to say that, you know, it's not easy, guys, you know. I have, I, I, you know, a few years ago, I might have not been as savvy with my finances. So, you know, you mix in there with credit cards and uh, all this other stuff, guys. I mean, you can easily see how you can get wrapped up real quick and like you're living day to day, literally, you know. And the only way to get ahead is unfortunately working hard is always a big component, but realistically, it's working smarter, right? looking for other opportunities to be able to, to, to get somewhere in this, in this, you know, in, the, in this country. And I love, I love my country. And another thing that I'm going to say, this is, uh, this video is being recorded on the 15th of July. So yes, so this, the, uh, assassination attempt on president Trump happened, I think two days ago. And, um, even with that, right guys, like not to get too much into politics, but I'm going to just keep it 100 with you guys. Like, don't expect any presidents to come and fix your problems. No president is going to fix my problems. You know what I mean? Like, I know a lot of people have their opinions on politics and this and that. But, like, don't ever think that because somebody gets elected president, oh, we're good. Like, listen, guys, no president is going to fix our problems. And, and honestly, we're in a situation right now, everybody, that if you really start looking at some details and, and, and some uh, some data. We're in a weird time right now, man. And, and um, my only thing that I can tell to everybody is this. If you're going to be, if you're going to be, uh, you know, right now, you hearing this from a, from a realtor, right? I do real estate every single day. You know, there are people that, yeah, that, that, that are doing well, guys. Remember, in any in any good, bad economy, people, there's always gonna be winners and losers. That's just how how it goes, right? I'm not. This is not to make fun of anybody. It's just matter of matter of fact. If you know, if if what worries me, what concerns me, everybody, is that overall, from a macro perspective, in, in economics, you have a, a really high percentage of debt. There's a lot of people that are financing a lot. There's a lot of programs, buy now, pay later, pay after. I mean, you guys see the programs all over, you know, you can pretty much finance anything. And because people are struggling, they start financing things that they may not need to finance or they may not need whatever it is they're financing. New cars. There's a, there's a super uh, high increase in repossessions of vehicles just because people have gotten into these crazy rates, crazy loans. That they just can't, they simply can't afford. I remember when you buy a car, guys, that's really not the hardest thing to be able to buy. You know, and, you know, it's pretty easy to get qualified for, a, you know, a $40,000 loan. You give that to someone where their income is not going up. It's a fixed income. You give them a crazy interest rate. You lock them in for five years. People get kind of, they real quick, they'll start realizing, hey, this might not be the best thing that I did. And this is just car payments, guys. We're not even talking about mortgages. Mortgages right now <clears throat> are usually about 7%. If you use a VA loan, you're going to be in the mid fives for VA loans. Obviously, not everybody qualifies for VA loans, but these are just numbers so you guys can get an idea. I know there's a good amount of people that watch this channel getting informed that want to be able to own a property. And listen, guys, I heard the other day someone say uh, realtors are the type of people to sell real estate but never actually own real estate. And man, that hit home, everybody. That really hit home because, and I, and and it's and in a sense, it's true. And I don't I don't speak for myself personally, because again, I'm pretty. I watch where my money goes. I don't I don't I don't buy new things every day. I, I buy what I need, and you know, I might go out with my uh, my wife. We we saw the uh, Argentina versus Colombia last night. We spent a little bit of money. We had a good time. And that's okay. 
We don't really do that very often. We cook at home almost every day. We eat at home every day. But it just put a, put me in perspective where it's like, whoa, man, like, what's the point of making money, right? And don't get me wrong, guys, spending money on fun things, new cars, jewelry, vacations, and and this and that, and all these things that we always want, right? When you get a little bit of money, man, it's hard to be able to not spend it on fun things. And that's the truth, you know? And um, even if you were to be able to save, let's say, and think about this, guys. One of the biggest reasons why saving, let's say, 50K, 40K, 30K, and let's just put it at 100K, one of the biggest reasons why it's so difficult to save 100k first is because you got to have a, a, a job that can provide you enough money where you're paying your bills and you have additional income to save that's the biggest uh, challenge obstacle but just as big as an obstacle guys is that if you get that money right let's say you're at whatever 20k 30k 40k 50k let's say 100k whatever the number is 10k whatever it is you can save it becomes increasingly difficult to not spend your money on fun stuff i mean you know, and I, I want to know what you guys think about this in the comments. Like, do you guys agree with me? Don't agree with me? You know, like, it, you know, what, where are you guys at as far as, you know, are you guys on the same page with me? Do you think I'm just, you know, what do you, what do you guys think? You know, so just, just going back to it, guys, like, yeah, like, if you're in a position right now where you can save money, you are in a good position, my friend, because right now, and, 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 and I say this in not a good way. Um, a good amount of people my age that I know, very few of them are able to save any money just because they're just living, you know, paycheck to paycheck. And um, that just makes it increasingly difficult, right? Like, and I, listen, it, it feels like yesterday that I was really in the same boat, you know, this, this, you know, thank, thankfully, you know, because of, I've been working hard. I've been, ha I've had some good opportunities, taking advantage of some opportunities, but I don't want to say, sit here and say, oh yeah, like, yeah, the people around me are, are not doing well. And yeah, I'm, I'm finding that, you know, it's not the case at all. Like, man, I, those new BMWs look real nice, everybody. A, new, a nice vacation right now would be, whew, would feel great to be honest with you. And it really takes discipline, everybody, to make a little bit of money, obviously, and to be able to save, man. Like, it's hard to save. It's hard to save, you know? Just with general expenses and then going back to what we're talking about now, it's just a lot of people are losing their homes just because of how crazy things are getting with the increase in expenses. We're going to call them hidden fees. When we call them hidden fees, we're not talking about the mortgage. We're talking about expenses on top of the mortgage, you know? And again, going back to it, insurance, taxes utilities, HOA payments. Um, and this is just basic living, everybody. You know, it's just basic living. And we call them hidden fees. There are, there are certain parts in this country, typically hidden fees, when we talk about hidden fees, you're looking at about fifteen to $20,000 in fees on, when we talk about ownership. And remember, this ownership is usually insurance, taxes, maintenance and repair on your property if you got to replace your ac things like that these things can get real expensive real quick everybody and just getting right into it just getting right into it guys and what's interesting florida is not on this list but we're going to talk about a list typically you across the united states you're looking at about about 15 to twenty thousand dollars in hidden fees but there are areas or states in this country that you're seeing hidden fees anywhere from 25 to thirty thousand dollars guys just an ownership. And we're not talking about crazy homes, everybody. We're talking about the average uh, hidden fees. I have some states here that I didn't want to run by you. So some places such as Hawaii, I mean, we obviously know Hawaii is super expensive. So that's not really, that shouldn't be much of a surprise. California's there on the list. But these are pretty interesting. Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Jersey. Some of these places, their hidden fees have gone up as much as 30%. You're just having... And remember, guys, with real estate, it has a lot to do with economics. When you have a lot of people living in an area looking to buy a home, whether they're living there permanently, seasonally, um, they come in. When you have a, a, a surge of people looking to buy in that area, you're going to have an increase in demand, which is going to shoot up 
the uh, the price, you know, all across. So, and it's a sad situation, right? Because you have uh, elderly, older older individuals not being able to afford a home because of this this surge and increase in prices. Then you look at the alternative living. Well, what's your alternative living? You know, uh, condos, townhomes. Uh, an alternative, realistically, is uh, going to be mobile homes. Land is more expensive now, guys, than it was two or three years ago. The same property that you bought three, four years ago right now is unaffordable for most, you know? You you include the interest rate at 7 8%, you know? And that's what it's really going at right now, guys. I mean, you lock an interest rate at that price. I know someone, and I always like to speak from experience and facts. I know someone in my building where I live that they pay, like, they pay, like, I think they pay, like, two grand or 2200 in just a mortgage payment. Another $800 in HOAs. Throw in the hidden fees on top of that. I mean... It's pretty crazy, to be honest with you, that somebody's gonna be paying just to live in a two to three bedroom condo, paying three to four thousand dollars with mortgages and hidden fees. That's kind of, I mean, think about this, guys. Let's say about 10 years ago, 10 to 15 years ago, a three, a three thousand dollar, let's just talk about three thousand dollars for mortgage. An HOA, right, about three grand. If you were paying three grand, you had a really nice house. Like, you had a, a four to five bedroom home, you know, three bath, two and a half bath, nice backyard. Like, things are not the same anymore, guys, you know? And for those of you that are paying so much money, like, listen, I understand why people want to, and there's people that want to buy regardless because they're just ready to buy. They're tired of renting. They don't want to keep throwing money away. And I hear that 100%, but... It's just a still super scary situation that here in this country, we're at a point where it's like, man, like, is this ever going to slow down? Is this ever going to stop? And going back to what we are talking about earlier about like the little red flags, you have a super, there's a good amount of credit being used all across the United States. There's high interest rates. There's high inflation. Uh, utilities are going up. Everything's getting more expensive. But your average wage is not going up proportionate to the amount of your expenses. So your fixed income, the power of your fixed income is literally dwindling by the years because people just literally can't afford to pay. You know? And it's just, if you're watching this, man, and, and you have a little bit of money, and when I say a little bit, you don't got to have a lot of money. A couple thousand bucks in your savings, you know, three thousand, five, ten, twenty, whatever it is. And, and I don't mean to... Say that's a little bit of money because to save twenty thousand dollars nowadays is is actually very difficult. Um, so I don't mean to say it's a little amount of money. That's a good amount of money. If you have that money, guys, don't get don't 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 start buying stuff. Don't get into uh, don't get into debt. Don't get into an additional debt. Everybody, start looking ways to cut back. And if anything, start looking for ways to try to invest that money. You know, stock market is one way, but look for other opportunities. You know, I mentioned earlier in this video, alternative ways of living. People that live in mobile homes, they are at a point that they can't afford the mobile homes because they can't afford the land that they have the mobile home on. So are there maybe alternative ways to make uh, an opportunity to make money there, guys? I mean, you know, it's not all doom and gloom, right? There's different uh, opportunities in different markets. Um, so, yeah, guys, we're just at that point where... We need to be able to, as a, especially as a middle class, you know, be able to uh, try to survive and not only survive, guys, prosper, right? I want my message not to be that, hey, guys, everything is going go to go, 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 go to, to the you-know-what. It's all bad news. Like, no, we got to be able to find ways, adapt, right? Maybe change professions, start a business, start something, doing something. Because let me tell you guys something, the nine-to-five uh, the nine to five grind. I think that mentality is good for some, but not so good for others. You know, you don't want to be able to just work and work and work and work and work and not be able to afford anything, especially now in this country. So, but, um, 
but yeah guys so going right back to it some places have about 25 to thirty thousand dollars in hidden costs uh here in south florida we, we're looking at about 15 to twenty thousand dollars in hidden costs looking at utilities uh mortgage payments not including mortgage payments uh utilities interest and insurance hello so yeah guys so just um you know I, what i was what i was trying to get at a little earlier was um as far as like you know and again this is not financial advice this is just honestly from one friend to another one realtor to uh uh, uh to you guys or from one individual and to somebody who's also in a similar boat where you know i'm not rich i'm not wealthy um but somebody that's trying to asp aspire and working to get to that point is we got to be smart with our money guys we got to be smart with our money and you know if you're looking at real estate as, a, as an investment and not a primary residence i understand you know to be honest with you guys it's kind of hard sometimes to be able to think man you're gonna spend you know you're gonna spend let's say put fifty thousand to seven we're talking about like an investment fifty thousand forty thousand sixty thousand on a property to profit five hundred dollars a month that's kind of a hard pill to swallow to be honest with you because that doesn't seem the numbers don't, don't seem to really add up when you really think about it but these are just uh some worries some thoughts that i have guys and that's pretty much it for today everybody um i wish you guys well i wish you guys the best i wish you guys stay healthy stay happy stay motivated um the at least in south florida guys there's a lot of people getting sick out here again um it seems that there's a uh, covid going around people getting sick so i just say you guys it's just to be safe if you're in south florida you know just be cautious of where you're going you know so if somebody's not feeling too well maybe this is yourself a little bit i know i do so but anyway everybody it's a pleasure to make these videos i'm going to be making them more continuously now that i'm not so under the weather um i've been super busy with work uh, i want to talk about that closing i had last week which was the hardest transaction i've done in my life but I'll give you guys an insight. Um, if you guys want to check me out, my Instagram is thejoelvargas at gmail.com. I post videos every single day of real estate, single family homes, townhomes, condos. Um, I post deals. I'm making videos on top three cities in South Florida, affordable cities, from a realtor's perspective, not just from like a random person's perspective. That's pretty much it, every guys. Hope you guys stay healthy, stay happy, stay motivated. Until next time, this is Joel. I am a licensed and insured realtor in South Florida. If you're looking to buy, sell, need a property manager, I would love to work with you. Have a great day, everybody.